and welcome to another episode of how to convert your car from gas to electric. In this episode, we're going to talk about power brakes. So stay with me as we explore the ins and outs of power brakes on electric conversion. This is the power brake booster on the car. This is, you know, uh, part of your vehicle to be converted. And it runs on vacuum. And the vacuum comes from the intake manifold of your gasoline vehicle. But when we remove the internal combustion engine, we lose the vacuum source. What we now need to do is replicate that vacuum source. And we're gonna do that using a vacuum pump. So let me show you the pump that we're going to use. Now, out of the box, this black piece wasn't included. Instead, it had this billet aluminum box on top, and the relay and the little terminal strip were inside this. Well, by removing this, we lost more than a pound. About a pound and a quarter. And we attach that with a piece of black ABS. So now this weighs just over four pounds. And, um, and again, it's self-contained. There's a lot of nice feature of this particular pump. It's small. The dimensions are, it's uh, five and a half inches tall. It's uh, six and a quarter inches long and four and a half inches wide. But this one has everything built in. So you've got your, um, your motor, you've got your pressure switch, and you have your relay. And so there's just three wires that connect to it now. We have a power wire that will go to um, unswitched 12 volts, and we'll have a ground and then we'll have a wire that goes to the ignition source and we'll show you all that and and it came with an inline fuse and everything so it's it's pretty good and this is um, just over three hundred dollars so it's a good value but the best part comes with a nice shock mount setup the best part is that this thing is a, a vein style pump versus the diaphragm pump that's so popular. This is has it's 20% less noise and vibration and 50% more vacuum. That's the bottom line. Better unit, they last longer than the diaphragm type. This is a nice compact setup. And so our three electrical connections and our vacuum line right here. Not too shabby. So let's take a look at how this is wired up in the big picture on the whiteboard. And then let's take a look at it 
mounted in the vehicle and we'll fire it up and, uh, and test it. So here's the diagram of the vacuum system. So here's our auxiliary battery providing 12 volts. Here's the ignition. And so when you turn on the key, turn on the ignition, if the pressure is below 15 pounds in the system, then this switch will close, which will close this relay, which will then bring 12 volts to our vacuum pump. Okay? And as soon as this reaches 20 inches of vacuum, it'll shut off. So it, it keeps our vacuum system between 15 and 20 inches of vacuum. Now, the components, other than the relay, we've got a fuse, or the vacuum pump, and it comes with one one-way valve, also comes with a T, which we're not going to be using. And then we're also going to be using a vacuum reservoir, which I'll show you in a moment. So then this is a one-way valve that's already in line in the vehicle, and this is the brake booster. We use the vacuum reservoir as kind of a safety feature. It will hold enough vacuum to make all, quite a few stops. I mean, the, the vacuum booster itself holds some, uh, but this is a much better way to go. The only issue, uh, well, there's two little issues. One is weight and the other is volume. And I'll show you the one that we're going to use. You can use different sized ones. The one that we're going to try to use on this vehicle is a little bit large, but this has an older braking system. It's got discs up front, drums in the back, and uh, we want a little extra vacuum in this particular instance. So this is the overview of both the electric and vacuum uh, portions of this. Let's take a look at the reservoir. This is the vacuum reservoir that we're going to be using in this particular project. This is an aluminum vacuum canister. You can see we've got our vacuum ports in and out, and it has a gauge. This weighs just over three pounds. So that's not bad, but what's bad is dimensions. I gave you the dimensions for the uh, pump. Here's the pump next to the vacuum canister. So it's a, it's a little bit a uh, little bit larger. Let's uh, let's put it in the vehicle. We'll take a look at the circuit in place, and we'll talk about our location for the both the pump and the vacuum. Uh, reservoir. Okay, so here's the uh, installed vacuum pump and reservoir. Actually, the reservoir is just sitting in here. We're not sure where that'll go for certain. You know, once the uh, motor and battery rack are in, uh, we'll make some final determinations. And if that were where it's going to sit, of course, we'd have to rotate the gauge so it's readable not readable once the battery packs in at that angle. So let's kind of trace the, the layout here. Here's our battery over here in the corner. This is the auxiliary battery. And it goes up here to the firewall. And what we have here is a bus bar. This is unswitched. This is 12 volts hot all the time. And that 12 volts goes from here through an inline fuse and to our relay on our um, vacuum pump. This is what we call a power relay. Power comes off our bus bar here, goes through the relay and to this fuse block right here. This relay 
is turned on by the ignition. And if you remember previous video, we talked about removing the fuse for the fuel pump circuit. Let's take a look at that. This is our only connection to the vehicle 12 volt system. In other words, we're pulling power off the auxiliary battery and taking it to our own auxiliary fuse block through the power relay. We also have some circuits that will be um, run that aren't switched, that are on 12 volts all the time. For instance, like instrumentation. And those will come off of that bus bar and go to a separate terminal strip. But for those things that are powered by the ignition, in other words, they're on when the ignition's on, the power comes from right here. This is the uh, where the fuel pump fuse was. So when you turn on the ignition and it would turn on the fuel pump, now instead of turning on the fuel pump, it sends power to the coil in the relay and that then on the other side over here, then that then powers up our switch 12 volt setup, the uh, fuse block and whatever else. So in this case, what it does is it then provides power to the relay to operate the vacuum pump. So let's look at the vacuum system here. This is our pressure switch. This is our vacuum. This is a one-way valve, our reservoir, another one-way valve, and our brake booster. So what we're going to do is we'll turn on the ignition and you'll hear the thing run. Although we have previously tested it and it is holding vacuum perfectly. It hasn't lost any vacuum at all. And to show you that the, uh, let, me, let me reposition the camera so we can take a look at that vacuum gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the vacuum line right here at the vacuum pump. You can hear the vacuum between here and there. But you'll notice because of the one-way valve, nothing's lost from the tank. But if I remove this now, Oh, must be a one-way valve in here also. <laughs> well, let's see. That's nice. Got a one-way valve on that. There we go. So now, with the system completely purged, I'll turn on the ignition. And you can watch and see how long it takes to achieve. I think this one's running between 15 and 18. We'll take a look. Okay, I'm going to turn on the ignition. Okay, that was from zero inches all the way up to 18 inches. So what I'll do is I'll go in and activate the brakes and we'll watch and see where that uh, runs between. Now one thing I noticed is that this thing, this booster, it uses a lot of vacuum. So this is going to run much more than the normal vehicle that uh, uh, we're used to. But this is a pretty good size, I mean it's thick and it's large in diameter. Uh, 1964. So let's take a look. Let's see. Brake applied. Of course, vacuum is assisting putting pressure to the brakes. Now I'm going to let off and now I want to draw in.
that was pumping the brake multiple times to see how it would keep up with just pump, 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 pump. And uh, you can see that booster uses a huge amount of vacuum. Another thing uh, I might mention is that in a quiet shop like this, that pump sounds loud. When you get out and about and there's ambient noise, you won't even notice it. When the hood's on, there's some more components in there to kind of muffle things. You won't hear it. You might hear it in the garage in the morning when you start up. The rest of the day, you're at an intersection, whatever, you're not going to hear it. Well, that's our episode for this week. Stay tuned next week for uh, a little bit of uh, insight on the power steering. And if you have any questions, or comments, please direct it to info at ev4unow.com and we'd be happy to respond. Thanks for watching. Hope we see you next Wednesday.